Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today we have a very special guest in the studio. This is Jennifer from Seagate. How are you doing, Jennifer? Um, well, thanks. I'm doing fantastic myself as well. Good Thank to you hear. very much for coming by. Um, today's video we're going to be discussing the Seagate Desktop SSHD. And um, if you guys aren't familiar with this product, uh, you can check out our YouTube channel. We've uh, already done a bit of coverage on it, but we wanted to bring Jennifer in to discuss about it a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit, a little bit of Seagate history, a little bit of Seagate future today, and we also have a quick demonstration set up so you guys can show uh, a bit more of the real-world performance of the drive and, and sort of some of the, the subtle differences, some subtle, some not so subtle that you can experience when you jump into an SSHD. So let's start from the basics. A SSHD is a solid-state hybrid drive. And what does that mean? It means it combines the best of a standard mechanical hard disk drive, or uh, HDD, okay. with SSD technology by integrating 8 gigs of NAND flash into the same package where you have the hard drive. They work together, and you can load up the most often used data that you're accessing, your boot data, your application data, for much better performance. Okay, that. so um, the, the, the problem, so to speak, with mechanical hard drives in the past, or maybe not so much a problem, but just one of the things that people tend to notice is when you have a spinning drive, it's got a little read right head, it has to move over, and it sometimes will park that, but it needs to, s to go and access that data. Even, even though that happens in milliseconds or less, it's still a brief pause that you might notice when you're accessing data off of a mechanical hard drive. So by int introducing the solid state drive elements into this drive, um, is, is that sort of the goal to sort of eliminate that, that bit of a lag or that big, bit of a hiccup that you might experience, whether you're talking about booting up a system or loading uh, one of your favorite programs, for example? Right, and that lag you're talking about is called latency. Okay. And it's how long it takes for the data that you want to rotate around on the platter and come under the head. So the head has to move over to the right track mm -hmm. and then wait for the data to spin around under it. And like you said, it's milliseconds, it's very, very fast, but if you're doing that to find different bits of data that are on different parts of the drive, it adds up. Definitely. And by, again, having the NAND technology loaded in, that lets you have all that frequently used data in one place where it can be instantaneous, just like an SSD. Now, as far as actually getting this drive installed and using it, is there some sort of complex setup program? Do I need to load up a bunch of software to start using it or, nope. or, or something like that? It is exactly like any other hard drive. No extra drivers, no nothing. It you just can just works. clone your old drive. In, um, plug it in and it just works. Okay, and then this is, this is uh, I've heard you describe this as, as sort of a learning drive, that it actually will sort of monitor what you're doing with your data, what type of data is your favorite. So for instance, loading up the operating system, there's data that uh, needs to be accessed there that's right. going to be accessed every single time. Or uh, say you're using uh, Excel or uh, Microsoft Office programs or uh, you're using Adobe or something like that. So this drive will actually see that that data is being accessed frequently and then it will park that data onto the NAND flash, which is very, very fast and responsive, um, and then it will access it from there instead of the spinning mechanical platters? Exactly. We call that adaptive memory technology. Okay. And again, like you said, the, the drive learns. And after you boot, say, three times, you are much faster than you were on the first time because everything you need to boot is now loaded into the NAND and it stays there. Okay, so plugging in the drive, like you said, uh, just, just as simple as plugging in any other Seagate mechanical hard drive or SSD for that matter. Yep. You're gonna plug it in, it's gonna work just like any other drive, so no software is required there. Um, but let's say that the first time you're gonna use it, it's of course gonna be accessing the data off of the mechanical drive, right. um, since it, it doesn't know that that's frequently used data yet. Correct. So um, something to bear in mind if you're plugging this in for the first time at home, give it a couple tries. Let it, let it learn your sort of behaviors or, or the typically uh, used programs that you might use, and then you'll, you'll notice a, a marked improvement over time. Precisely. Very nice. And it's not a long time. Like I said, three, three times and it's learned. About three times and it'll, it'll, it'll store that in there. Um, as far as uh, some specs itself, uh, this is a serial ATA drive, so any, any serial ATA system you can plug it into. Correct. Um, you guys recommend serial ATA uh, 2 or serial, serial ATA 3, or pretty much either any one of them is okay? Any of them will do. Okay. Maybe not Serial ATA 1, that's a little bit, that's a little <laughs> bit old, but uh, so Serial ATA Revision 2, which is 3 gigabits per second uh, data throughput, Serial ATA Revision 3, uh, which is 6, 6 gigabits gig. per second. It'll mm -hmm. work with either one, yep. uh, and uh, 
so basically, um, whether you're using uh, desktop right now, or even if it's a, maybe a couple years old, this is still a great item to drop in there. It'll plug and, right um, in. Since mechanical drives, if you are using a mechanical drive right now, you're going to notice a huge imp improvement. And, and I can vouch for this myself since I've tried this drive out once or twice. Um, other than that, other than the uh, connection point, this is a 3.5 inch drive, and this is one of the newer ones that, that have come out um, because this is designed for desktop use. You guys also have uh, laptop style drives, a smaller 2.5 inch form factor as well? We do. We actually have two versions of those now. Okay. Uh, we have a 2.5 inch drive that's got a Z height of 9.5 millimeters, and okay. then we also just recently launched one at 7 millimeters. Oh, very nice. So it'll fit really nicely into the slimmer laptops that are available now. And so, you can get uh, that same kind of upgrade path that you have from a standard hard drive to a solid state hybrid drive in that seven millimeter form factor. So the slim and light uh, laptops, and, and again, that's another item where if you have a laptop, even if it's a couple years old and it's using a mechanical drive, uh, that's a great way to sort of infuse some more life into a, an older laptop or something like that is to actually drop in a, a, a hybrid drive like this one. Right. And you're going to notice that performance. Right. Uh, and then as and far it's a really as economical way of course, to, to yeah. get that, that little lift too, because the price delta between a hard drive, a standard hard drive, and a hybrid drive is quite small versus Definitely. going all the way to an SSD, which if you are really wanting the absolute most spectacular performance you can get in every single application, you'd probably want to go to an SSD, but then mm -hmm. you're paying a lot more and you have a lot less capacity. Yeah, that's very nice. And that's another one of the huge benefits of, of this uh, hybrid technology is that you get both that responsiveness of the SSD as well as all that capacity, um, which can be very expensive if you're looking at, say, a 500 gig or one terabyte SSD. Those Correct are very expensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, as far as uh, the drive itself, so, so we mentioned uh, 3.5 inch here, two terabyte, uh, also the 2.5 inch available uh, in a couple different Z heights. Uh, what are the capacities on that? Up to a terabyte. Up to a terabyte. Right. Uh, and then as far as the NAND flash itself that's available in here for it to use uh, for the caching, how much of that is in, in There's here? eight gig in eight all gigs. of those drives. Okay, across yep. the board, eight gigs of NAND flash, um, which is gonna be plenty, for again, for your, your daily use type files that it's right. gonna be uh, It'll be perfect that. if you just run Microsoft op Office applications all day long, you boot your system a few times a day, perfect. You know, there's going to be some applications, of course, where mm -hmm. you really want to go all the way to an SSD, mm -hmm. and we have an SSD to recommend for that, and I'm sure you've talked about it as well. Definitely. Actually, I was going to bring that up that up next. We do have a demo to show you guys. So we're just going to do a quick boot demo to show you guys a comparison here. Um, but I wanted to talk about that. I, I want to ask you while you're here, because I'm always curious about uh, the future, but let's talk about bit of history for, sure. for Seagate, of course. You guys are a giant when it comes to storing bits of data. Uh, you've been around for a really long time, and you're really at the forefront when it comes to uh, both the existing technologies of mechanical drives, which a lot of folks have uh, been using for years and years, but also moving forward uh, to the future. So uh, the mechanical drive is still available, and we're going to be comparing to a uh, pretty standard 7200 RPM, one terabyte mechanical Seagate Barracuda drive over here. Right. Uh, you guys also have SSDs, which I've been very happy with so far. I've actually tested uh, a couple of them so far, the Seagate 600 as well as the Seagate 600 Pro. Yep. And then the, they're uh, fast, aren't they? They're really fast. <laughs> I, I, I love them. Yeah, I've given a lot of props to Seagate. I like the controller you guys have used. Performance is really, uh, really top notch. So um, it's a great solution if you guys are looking for a dedicated SSD. Or if you maybe uh, are looking for something that's in between, kind of gives you the, bit of, uh, the best of both worlds, then the uh, desktop SS SSHD or the laptop SSHD, uh, fantastic option as well. Yep. Excellent. That full portfolio helps us cover all the bases. All right, you guys have everything covered. So that being said, um, let's, let's, let's get set up for a demo here, but let's talk about real world use case scenarios. We've already mentioned a few of them here, um, but uh, software that you load on a regular basis is going to be accelerated starting up your operating system, and that's what we're going to demo here, uh, just booting up in general is going to be accelerated. Uh, what other types of performance improvements um, can peop people expect to see um, when they're moving to an SSHD from a standard mechanical drive? So you'll see performance improvements pretty close to what you'll get with an SSD. Mm -hmm. um, for boot, um, it'll, it'll, you'll see the demo here in uh, just a couple minutes. Um, but for applications, all your standard Microsoft Office applications, uh, Adobe apps, even if you're um, browsing gaming. Mm -hmm. um, not all games um, will benefit from having a, a hybrid drive in there, but if you're like me and you don't game very much, you're mm -hmm. constantly reloading your game because you keep dying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that reload, um, again, happens, once you play the game a couple times, will happen a lot faster okay. than 
um, if you're trying to pull it all off rotating media. So uh, for, for those of you who die a lot, <laughs> this will help, help you get there that's, a lot faster and play again, me. have another it, life. It, it depends on the games, but some games, yes. are, some games are meaner than others when it comes to, to dying. <laughs> okay, uh, so that said, let's go ahead and jump into a demo. Um, but one last question for you. So yes. I'm going to give a, 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 a reference of a comparison. So um, when it comes to mechanical drives, yeah. uh, we have uh, what's spindle speeds, which has been uh, referenced a lot in the past. So somebody, somebody might have gone, say, from a 5400 RPM uh, mechanical drive to a 7200 RPM drive. And uh, we were talking a bit before we started filming how that might give you 5 to 10% performance improvements. Right. Comparing that type of jump to going from a mechanical drive to the SSHD, what type of uh, just sort of ballpark percentage performance increase could you expect? It depends on your application, so I'm okay. going to put that caveat first. Definitely. Um, but certainly we've seen boot times um, twice as fast. Twice as fast, yep. very nice. Good. And um, for some application loads, we've seen five times faster. Excellent. Very nice. Okay, so that's uh, just a, again, ballpark uh, sort of example of the types of performance increases you guys might expect. And let's move on to our demonstration. So uh, what we're going to be doing here is we have two identical systems, uh, although physically they might lo not look identical, ones back here. These are our new TV test beds. Uh, these are based on uh, ASUS ROG, the Rampage 4 Formula motherboards. Uh, they've just been upgraded to the latest Intel 4960X processors, which are Ivy Bridge E's. Uh, they're running GeForce GTX 760 graphics cards. None of this really affects the storage all that much, but just to let you guys know, these are top of the line systems. There's not much further you could go than that. So mm -hmm. really, all we're showing you here is the difference between using one of these systems with a spinning mechanical hard drive, which is the one on my left right here, and then using it with the SSHD, which is the one that's down here that you guys can't see because it's huge and distracting, so I moved it out of the way. And that's gonna be booting off of this one which means I should probably plug that back in. Yes. Let's go ahead and plug that back in, and we'll give you guys a, a boot comparison between these two systems. All right, guys, so the uh, SSHD has now been installed in the system, which is right down here. I'm sorry you can't see it, but uh, look at any of my benchmarking videos where I talk about video cards, and you can get a good look at that one. Uh, this one up here on the left, of course, using the mechanical drive. So this is a, a Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM, one terabyte drive versus the two terabyte SSHD that we have going on down here. Uh, Jennifer, would you mind assisting and we'll do a, a quick countdown for our boot up. Three, two, one, go. And uh, one thing I want to mention, we've, we've booted up both of these systems several times already so that the SSHD uh, could cache the data onto the NAND flash memory. Um, and I've done everything I can to make these two systems identical. However, um, the system on the right here with the mechanical drive uh, does seem to be getting to the Windows load screen a little bit faster. As you can see, it's already gotten to it there. So that's purely related to the motherboard. So the SSHD is already a few seconds behind when it comes to that, but you'll notice it uh, increasing, and it's, it should pass up the mechanical hard drive here within just a few moments. Here we go. We have the welcome screen. And as you can, we didn't even see the welcome screen on the SSHD. It just blew right by it. So uh, it's already booted up. We're still waiting on the, on the uh, mechanical drive. And uh, maybe, maybe five to 10 seconds later, uh, the mechanical drive is now booted up as well. Just a quick example of how going with the SSHD can improve your boot times. Now you can imagine um, that was a difference of, let's say, again, we're not measuring these uh, scientifically right now, but let's say you've changed your boot time from uh, 40 seconds down to 30 seconds. Um, that same type of uh, performance increase will also reflect over to uh, applications that you might actually be using once you're in the operating system. Right. So um, loading up software and that sort of thing. And actually I found when you're in the operating system you might see an even more dramatic change. So for instance you go to load a browser for example, you double click right. on the icon, uh, you're loading up Firefox or, or something like that. With a mechanical drive you'll often, you'll have to sit, you'll You'll wait a few seconds, whereas with an SSHD, you're going to click that, it's going to pop it up, uh, pop it up. it's going to be pretty much instantaneous, so we'll, right. or, or as close, about as close to it as we can achieve with our current uh, level of hardware. Yep. Which is what we've all come to expect with all our other gadgets, right? Definitely. We want it right now. We want that instant on, we want that quick responsiveness, and we want no latency, no lag uh, from Correct. when we've chosen to do something to when our computer comes back to us and gives us the information. Right. But that is uh, pretty much going to wrap it up for this w video. And Jennifer, thank you so much again for coming by today. You're welcome, Paul. And uh, we'd love to have you back as soon as Seagate has uh, new products coming out. Speaking of which, 
What is the future uh, of SSHD? You guys have anything else in the pipeline right now? Well, we're already shipping this one that you saw back there in the system mm -hmm. at two terabytes. We also have plans to ship it at four terabytes. Oh, four terabytes. And then we're always working on new technologies. You can go to Seagate.com and find out what we're doing in terms of new technology developments and some of our white papers and technology okay. points of view. All right, so Seagate.com if you want more information about that. Right. Of course, all these drives are currently available on Newegg.com and very excited to hear that a four terabyte version is also going to be coming out for the SSHD because that's a capacity that solid state drives can't even touch right now. Correct. That's, that's so far beyond that. So I'm um, very excited. Thank you very much again, Jennifer, for coming, by, for coming by today. Thanks to all you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, go ahead and hit the like button down there. Leave us a comment down in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.